Hey, how's it going? I'm Adam and welcome to my channel. Well, today I won't be reviewing a camera or a film stock, but instead sharing with you my reasons on why I shoot film. So in the world of anime, this is what you might call a filler episode. Before we start, I'd like to tell you how I got into film. I was a digital photographer for many years and loved it. But about a year ago, maybe more, I went to a pawn shop with my friend and I saw this beauty laying there, the Zenit TTL. It was cheap, so I decided why not? With no knowledge of film cameras or film stocks, I picked up a roll of Ektar 100. Yes, my very first roll of film was Ektar 100. I finished the roll and as you can imagine, the photos turned out terrible. It, it, it was just awful. But I fell in love with the feeling and was determined to learn how to shoot decent film photos. 12 cameras and a year later, here we are now making eh, YouTube videos. So why do I shoot film? Let's start with the most obvious one, the look. The film look gives me an image I can't exactly replicate anywhere else. I have seen newer cameras with film simulations such as the Fuji X100V, which is constantly sold out and more expensive than it originally was. The colors may be really close or even the same, but the film look isn't just about the color. In film, we have this thing called grain. It adds texture to your photos. Here's a sample off a 35mm roll. Some people mainly shoot film because of this reason. You can add grain in Lightroom, but to me it sometimes feels a bit out of place. Due to the fact that modern lenses and cameras are really sharp and clinically clean, where some vintage lenses are not and usually have some character to them such as lens softness or tornado style bokeh. This is why some modern day filmmakers still shoot film such as Quentin Tarantino, Christopher Nolan, even off the new Batman movie starring Cedric Diggory, some scenes were shot with the Helios 44. More specifically, the car chase scene with the Penguin and Batman. I'm only mentioning modern day filmmakers because pretty much movies and photos go hand to hand. And some of you might even want to recreate the look of certain movies such as Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Raging Bull, or even the Oscar award winning movie for 5 seconds, La La Land. So when you add the color, the texture, the fact that it's not clinically clean, vintage lenses, you get the film look. Next up is the feeling. When I look at film photos, I feel like I'm looking at an old memory. It's nostalgic and it sometimes gives you a warm feeling. Like going through your old family album or even finding your old Yu-Yo cards in the attic. God, I wanted to be Seto Kaiba so bad. Anyway, it may not be perfect and for some, probably far from it, but I do think looking at film photos immediately invokes some sort of emotions. Plus, I do enjoy the feeling of keeping film alive. Film photography has a rich history and it's been around for so long. It's 2023, the age of digital cameras, and I am still shooting film and keeping that tradition alive. Yeah, I know it's corny, but hey, I too sometimes can be a corn dog. It made me a better photographer. Now, I'm not saying I'm a good photographer. I'm below average, but it definitely made me a better photographer. Let's face it, each shot on film costs money and you have a limited amount of photos on a roll. This forced me to slow down to properly expose a photo and search for just the right composition. When I shot digital, I would just blast away 10 photos of the same composition and constantly feel safe because I knew I can always fix it in post. Where in film, you are a bit limited in post-production and the amounts of photos on a roll. So whether I liked it or not, I had to be better. I also started to imagine how certain photos would look in my head with specific film stocks. Uh, due to the fact that each film stock is different, I would take all sorts of different photos, photos I normally wouldn't take. It's a bit more physical. I love buying a roll of film, putting the film inside the camera, winding, then unwinding the camera, and then going to the film lab and have it developed. You can even develop film by yourself, which is a whole breaking bad type of process. And then you would get your beautiful negatives, in my case terrible, and scan them. I actually think this whole process brings more satisfaction because you put so much work into them. If only high school me can hear me now, I just might have done well in school. And finally, I think I should mention, it's film stocks. There are a bunch of different film stocks, you know, if we're ignoring Fuji, just canceling them left and right. So if you ever feel like you're bored of your photos or feel like you're in a rut, 
you can just pick up a film stack that normally you wouldn't shoot or haven't shot for a long time and it will give you a fresh perspective and a new look so yeah i think that's pretty cool that you can just constantly switch it up well that's the end of the video thank you so much for watching i truly appreciate it so those are my reasons on why i shoot film i do understand how some people are not a fan of film and i do think that film is a bit over romanticized at times i personally don't care if you shoot digital film whatever you should shoot with whatever makes you want to go out and actually take pictures in my case that just so happens to be film for those wanting to shoot film in 2023 but are a bit afraid due to the price hike, there are still a bunch of good affordable uh, film cameras out in the wild that aren't popular. They may not be cool in the internet world and maybe your favorite social media celebrity doesn't use them. But I repeat, they still produce amazing results. Anyway, that's the end of the filler episode. Tune in next time to see me become the next Hokage. <laughs> Take care.